course, is Patrick Mullins. The helicopter, the engine is running. That pilot will be off the mobile phone very shortly. They'll be heading to Mallow. There he is. He's one ahead of Jamie Codd in the race to be champion amateur again, of course. And the horse in question, he rides in Cork as a horse called Fabulous Saga. It's an even money favourite in the 515. He's taking the helicopter. It could be a tip in itself. Meanwhile, as you can see, great crowds here at Fairy House. The sun is coming out and we continue our build-up to the Irish Grand National at 5 o'clock. Half a million euro in prize money. What do you like in the race? Our Duke is your current favourite at 11. The two Haymount coming in for support. So too Ted's horse, Fox Rock, Manila for you. Lots of horses fancy as Tom will tell us in a few moments. But the runners and riders for the Avoca Dunboyne Juvenile Hurdle. It's a 3.15 contest. One Dandy Mag is Paul Townend. Two expatriate for Rachel Blackmore and Elmarie Holden, of course. The team that will be represented by abolitionists in the national. Number 14. Three long call for Robbie Paul. Rides the favourite. Our Duke in the national. Andrew Lynch is on the go again. Number four. Number five. Orion Dorbrell is Ruby Walsh. Six. Project Blue Book. Barry Garrity, of course, is on Manila for you in the national. And number seven. Denario De Zobo. The amount of uh, Brian Cooper, who rides general principal in the national at five o'clock. This is a little trappy little race, Tom. It really is, because actually, when you go back to the 25th of February, Denari De Zobo, the filly, and indeed the top one, expatriate in the market, uh, met here at Ferry House, and it was expatriate who crossed the line in front, but actually was then demoted for interference caused so there is the width of a fine coat of paint between them on form both of them ran in the triumph at Cheltenham it was the top one in the market understandably uh, who's promoted to favouritism today Elmarie Holden's horse uh, ex-patriot who hogs the limelight today you ran, blind, ran a blinder at Cheltenham but she got loose before before the race and that stable the Holden stable uh, would win with a bus ticket two winners at Cork yesterday exactly so and bear in mind the energy expended when charging down the track pre-race and even then turning in a mighty effort so you can well understand the confidence Denari de Zobo, bear in mind the tongue tie goes on today for the first time what's also interesting, another horse who ran well at Cheltenham comes over from England, from Yorkshire Project Bluebrook, and yet he's drifting in the betting, 7-2, to two, out to 9-2. to two. One other fascinating angle, uh, the Strasbourg winner, Orion Dobrell, that's the choice of Ruby Walsh from the two Willie Mullins runners, however, it's the other one they're backing, Paul Townend. He's on Dandy Mag, who beat subsequent winners at Gorham Park in February, didn't feature in the triumph, better expected today, 12-1 to one into 8-1 to one over your shoulder with the boards. Oh, look at all these people. Lovely to see them coming here, Irish Grand National Day, one of the big ones, and uh, they've turned out in force. Now, this is a horse who's our favourite. This is expatriate. He's got a big, big chance, as we've said, trained by uh, Elmarie uh, Holden, the Mount of Rachel Blackmore. Both of them are in fine, fine form. And this horse ran an absolute stormer at Cheltenham, finished fourth behind a really good winner in Duffy de Sol. He can come on again. We'll love the ground. There we have Project Blue Book. John Quinn's runner here, fourth the Flying Tiger at Cheltenham. That was a real good run. A reproduction of that would give him a big shout as well too. And uh, nine to two, and your support from as well too. Smart horse by Sindar. Our first winner was by Sindar. This is Denaria de Zobo. Now, uh, this is the third time, in fact, that Denaria and Expatriate have met. They met here back in February. Expatriate came out on top by about a head or so. Denario got it in the stewards' room, and then they went to Cheltenham, and Expatriate finished a long way in front of them. I think he'll finish in front of him this time as well. He wears a tongue strap for the first time today, Denaria de Zobo. The Mount of Brian Cooper. He is interesting. He's 11 to 2. Or he's not 11. He's, uh, this one's 11 to 2. Sorry. Yeah, 5 is uh, Willie Mullins' runner here, Ruby on board. Uh, this horse has no form in this country. Uh, he ran a nonce and then he won uh, at uh, Strasbourg in, uh, back in October. We've nothing really to go on except he's out of a, a powerful yard. Long call is number three and is a 20 to 1 shot. He uh, joined Tony Martin. In August, he looks held on all his form. He won a small race at Hereford back in January. He's run twice uh, since he ran at Ludlow. He ran at Cheltenham as well uh, when he finished down the field behind Flying Tiger. Yeah, he was a big, big fancy at Cheltenham, this horse now. Big fancy. A lot of people backed him at anti-post prices and that kind of thing. He didn't run up the scratch, but I'd say he's a better horse than that. Interesting, isn't he? Dandy Mag here, Ted. Yeah, Danny Mag and the one of Willie's. Uh, no match at Cheltenham uh, in the triumph, uh, just out of his depth there. But he done well when he beat Lockrass, who won since again in Teedon Park down at Gordon. Uh, the second is one owned and trained by Anne-Marie Holden as well too, and that won a couple of times since. So it was a good race. Well, Anne-Marie Holden is uh, the trainer of Expatriate, and she is with Tracy. 
Yes, she certainly is. Thank you very much, Robert. Elmy, first of all, before we go any further, well done yesterday with that double in court with yourself and Rachel. It was brilliant. Thank you very much. It was a great day yesterday, so two winners and a third. So it's great. And Rachel gave him a super ride. She's absolutely flying at the moment. So. A great association together. And, of course, she's riding uh, expatriate here for you, who was fourth in the Triumph. He came out of Cheltenham well? Yeah. Came out of travelled home, good, perfect, and all that. So, you know, it take the, um, take a bit out of any horse. And but he's back now, and he's ready to go. He's in flying farm, working super at home. So hopefully now, bit of luck today. He won't be too far away. Conditions and everything should really suit him today, shouldn't it? Yeah, the trip and the ground, he'll absolutely love it. So he's a lovely looking horse. Just watching going around the paddock here. Yeah, he's a fine big horse. So hopefully plenty scope, and that's a bit of luck now. Is all we need today. So. And I'd say the nerves are beginning to get you now for the big one for the national because you've got abolitionist who was so good in the Leinster National against, again, uh, Rachel on board. How is he? We're dying soon. He's flying. He's ready to go now. He's working away super at home. And so a bit of luck today if he jumps around and runs on his previous run, he won't be too far away. And the trip and everything should really suit him. The trip and the ground, yeah, that'll suit him perfect. And hopefully just if he can stay out of trouble at all, just get home. Well, I hope the success keeps going. Lovely talking to you, Marie. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, best of luck. Best of luck to our Marie. Now, uh, Ted Expatriate, we saw winning here, well, first past the post, here at Fairy House back in February. It was heavy old ground there. He beats Denario de Zoba, but Denario de Zoba gets it in the stewards' room. Interesting that this is the third time they've met. They've been to Cheltenham since. This is a good horse. Yeah, he's a good horse. He's run very consistent uh, every step of the way through and he's run a Cheltenham run was even uh, his best run so far. So if he's come back from that well, he just lay in there on, on Desario de Zobo and lost in the stewards' room. She switched around Brian Cooper and rallied well uh, from the back of the last to get back alongside him again. This horse just idled a bit when he got to the front. I think he won't be in front too soon today. And you'll just see as they get close to the line, Desario de Zobo just gets right back to within maybe shouting distance of him at the line. And they deemed that that interference going to the last, which was rightly so. Do you fair know what enough, I mean? Isn't it? Yeah, fair enough was right. A great crowd of people here. I was a little bit slow coming in myself today. It was the first time for a long time uh, that I was in a slow traffic uh, from the main road, from the motorway up along. Great crowd of people here. I must say the motorway has made this a much more easier place to get to uh, from our side of the country. Anyway, going through Manute and Dunbine and places like that, twisty roads. It's a great run up the motorway and up the M50 and down uh, on the other one. We might have done a few queer things, Jordan, that economic times of the depression or whatever you want to call it but we've bloody well done a great job with the roads that's for sure <laughs> huh? go good. to Galway and go to Cork and go to Waterford and go to Belfast I mean I must say it's a, it's a pleasure uh, to drive around now seven runners then for this Avoca Dunboyne juvenile hurdle four year olds grade two race and uh, interesting uh, Ruby on Dorian de Braille He's, yeah. a, he's a, a son of uh, Saint de Saint, who is, is uh, the sire of Jack Adam and Quito de la Roque and others, making his debut for Willie. But he ran twice over hurdles in, in France, won one of them. He's obviously decent. Andy, Andy Mack. Yeah, runners are just coming out onto the track. They've had a look at a hurdle and they've had their girts tightened, so they're probably taking a bit of formation as to what way the race will be run now. They're just walking out behind me here and they'll uh, walk down around the third last fence and aim back up the straight and jump off. You can see, uh, looking at the form of the race beforehand, I was struggling to see who might make the running of that, but uh, Orion Do Dobrell, he, did, uh, he was ridden quite handily when he won in France and it looks like Ruby's going to line him up down the inner and possibly make a bit of use of him, uh, lining up with him. Brian Cooper on Denaria des Obos and outside there is the diminutive Dandy Mag and uh, after that looks like Barry Garrett he's going to line up a little bit wide in the English Challenger Project Blue Book and Rachel Blackmore on the favourite expatriate looks as though she may follow Ruby down the inner on uh, yeah as I mentioned expatriate so runners are all seeming nice and calm for a bunch of juveniles and they'll just round the jump here and straighten up and looks like it's all going to be very calm today Expatriate in the black and white hoops. Rachel Blackmore, two more winners yesterday, and uh, Dandy Mag, Paul Townend, and the red colours nearest to us. One of two in the race trained by Willie, Dorian Dubrell, and Ruby Walsh in the red with the 
yellow hoops and then uh, number three in the blue colours that's long call project book John Quinn I saw him win he won in Musselboro and then he ran a cracker behind Fort Bridge in Musselboro and I thought he ran well uh, in uh, behind Flying Tiger in the uh, Fred Winter as well too Richard Pugh is our commentator Richard Yes, just jumping off in the Avoca Dunboyne Juvenile Hurdle, this Grade 2 contest over the two-mile trip and a short run to the first where Dandy Mag is going to take them along with for company Denario de Zobo as they clear the first. Orion Dobrell was a little bit awkward further out wide is Expatriate towards the inside the white cap of Project Blue Book. They're being followed by On The Go Again who races with Long Call at the back of the field. Steady early pace now, making the way on towards flight number two towards the inside. It is Dandy Mag over on the near side. Denario de Zobo a little between them as they landed over that one. Project Blue Book just pulling his way up into a share of third with over on the near side, Orion Dobrell and they're being followed by Expatriate who's keeping wide out of trouble, Long Call is down the inside and the early back marker is on the go again, so the seven runners seven riders all engaged in the big one at five o'clock but these seven runners make their way on the turn bringing them away from the stands and on towards flights three and four, Denaria de Zobo on the outside, the Mount of Brian Cooper on the inner, Dandy Mag and Paul Town and then Orion Dobrell and Ruby Walsh in third they're being followed by Project Blue Book the Mount of Barry Garrity, four down the inside Side, expatriate and Rachel Blackmore who can't now be beaten in the conditional riders title Donna Myler can only ride seven as a conditional she's seven in front one more will confirm the outright victory for her huge achievement for Rachel Blackmore towards the back of the field on the go again and Andrew Lynch in the back marker is Long Call and Robert Parr going towards flight number four Denario de Zobo on the outside towards the inside as they clear that one is Dandy Mag the half brother to Vroom Vroom Mag behind these expatriate and this one's inside Orion Dobrell they're being followed by Project Blue Book who's just dropped back into fifth briefly on the go again is last but one and the back marker is Long Call so now they make the turn at the far side of the track they're right across from the stands and it is Dandy Mag who leads them now has gone on by a length and a half to two to Denario de Zobo racing in second they're being chased in third towards the inside by Project Blue Book then just outside these the big white face of the favourite expatriate he was fourth in the triumph hurdle Orion Dobrell making his Irish debut is in the centre in the red jacket just behind these is Long Call and the pink and green quartered of On The Go Again is the back marker of the group flight five coming up now and it is going to be over in front Dandy Mag and Denaria de Zobo little between them Denaria de Zobo has closed up the gap again on Dandy Mag they've taken the field along Expatriate travelling smoothly now goes into third he travelled really well at Cheltenham into the straight when he finished fourth Project Blue Book he was fourth in the Fred Winter is right on his inside they're disputing three and four now the pair being followed by Orion Dobrell on the go again is on the outside and Long Call is the back marker so they leave the back straight behind them and make their way towards the next this is four flights from the finish Dandy Mag going to lead them over from Denaria de Zobo is about a half a link to a link down third on the inside Project Blue Book was thrown at that by Barry Gerdy expatriate is just on this one's outside Long Call is next and then a couple of links break to Orion Dobrell who's towards the back now as they make their way on along the side of the course they have three flights left to jump and just over five furlongs to race Dandy Mag with the advantage from its second spot is Denaria de Zobo they're being followed by expatriate Project Blue Book just tucked in behind the leading pair Orion Dobrell is next and then towards the inside Long Call looks for a little bit of room and the back marker is on the go again so now they make their way towards the turn into the straight they've two flights left to be jumped and it's still Dandy Mag who's going to lead them in being followed by in second spot Denaria de Zobo expatriate looms large now on the outside as Project Blue Book has asked for his effort Long Call has improved into five on the inside of Orion Dobrell straightening up now almost three in line towards the second last in the Dunboyne hurdle and in front it is still Dandy Mag travelling strongly now expatriate has asked for his effort Project Blue Book sees a gap on the inside going to try and take it expatriate on the near side comes to join Dandy Mag at the second last little between them Project Blue Book wasn't quick over that one and Dandy Mag is putting it right up to expatriate Project Blue Book now switches for a gap in the centre Rachel Blackmore's keeping that tight as they head towards the final flight Dandy Mag expatriate and Project Blue Book with very little room at the final flight Dandy Mag expatriate Project Blue Book back in third and as they head inside the closing stages it's Dandy Mag who's hanging on in front now Project Blue Book has a little bit of room he's going to take it and as they head towards the line Project Blue Book has just got up for Barry Gurdy. Dandy Mag was second. Expatriate was third. Denaria de Zobo was four. And they're being followed in by Orion Dobrell. Next in was on the go again. And long call. Some wonderful race riding there. But Barry Gurdy came out on top. Project Blue Book for John Quinn and Barry Gurdy. And the colours of J.P. McManus. It's another Sindar.
Well, this was a race to watch and watch again. It was jockeys riding at the best. Uh, one man trying to get where there wasn't enough room. Another man stopping him. Another young girl trying to keep him. But the best horse ended up winning on the day and got a great drive from the back of the last. Just watch him turn in. Paul Townend and Dandy Mag is in front. Uh, Rachel Blackmore moves up here with the white and the blue... White, the white colours here on the favourite expatriate. Barry is tucked away in the inner air, gets a run through down here, but Paul knows he's coming and that wing gets a bit tight here. Paul knows he's there, he doesn't want to cut the snot off from there, but he keeps him tight and Barry goes, has to switch and come between him. Rachel hasn't got the horse, she does her best, she lies in as best she can, pulls a stick through into her left hand to make sure the horse lies in on top of him, but Barry gets a bit of a split there and once he jumps it, he gets enough of room here. Once he gets a couple of tears into Project Blue Book, he finds plenty. He'd have been an unlucky loser, but he gets a great drive here. When you get yourself in a tight situation, you want a good man to get out of it, and Barry is just able to do that, and he got up and win. Beat Standy Mag, who had a green run all the way through, and uh, Project Blue Book has just found that bit more in the closing stages. Barry gets strong on him, gets a few tears into him. Paul Townen on the far side, a brilliant rider as well too, and Rachel Blackmore, our leading conditional, giving her a great ride here on the stand side as well, just not good enough. There's a steward's inquiry, but I would say, if we see the head on, there will be no change whatsoever. Barry had to fight his corner there. He tries to go through on the inside. Paul keeps him tight. He gets a gap between him. Rachel keeps him tight. They're all entitled to keep one another tight. That's what racing is about. Tighten everybody up. Make it difficult. We'll see the head on here. But Barry gets himself out of the situation. And no stronger man. Down to the second last here. Now you see here, he has enough room there. But the wing of the hurdle comes out a bit there. And Paul leaves him just barely enough room to see it. Gets back in there. He's a length clear. Barry doesn't have the snatch up. Now Barry has no choice but to poke his way through between Rachel Blackmore and uh, Paul Townend. He has to barge a little bit, but that's what it's about. He can't say, excuse me, would you get out of the way? He has to fight it, and it gets a bit tight there. Paul's horse comes out to meet him, just, and, but Barry gets stuck into this horse from here on in, and he finds plenty. Rachel Blackmore can find no more. Paul Townend, stick in the left hand, runs to the line, but it's going to be Project Blue Book's day. What a race to watch, Ted. I absolutely loved it. It was fabulous. These three gave us some real treat. And Barry, what a competitor he is. And, uh, yeah, he had to fight. No, he had to, he had to wait for his gap. But uh, when it came, he, he, he got there. He was on a brave horse. They were all on brave horses. It looked like Dandy Mag for his corner, expatriate as well. I couldn't see this coming. This was the Fred Winter fourth taking on the Triumph Hurdle fourth. The Fred Winter is the consolation race to the Triumph. But this horse has been brought over from uh, Yorkshire by John Quinn. John, an Irishman, training so successfully in Yorkshire. He's brought him over here. He's won in great style in the colours of JP. As we've said, another Sindar. They love this good ground. And a lovely, lovely race to watch. Yeah, he ran off a high enough mark in the Fred Winter, though, so it wouldn't have um, been too dissimilar to finishing fourth. But, but he still didn't get into the biggie, did he? He didn't know? get in, no, but still, it's, uh, his line of form wouldn't have... Uh, no. You know, it wouldn't be a complete shock that he has turned around the form. Wasn't uh, it a great today. race to watch? Yeah, brilliant race. I didn't think, I thought watching it, he was going to just uh, run out of time, but definitely, he was definitely on the line. He was probably the better horse and going away a little bit. Ah, earlier. yeah. The, I mean, the stewards are going to watch that race and they'll watch it closely. And uh, yeah, yeah I was watching f from the head on. Uh, what was the interference? Well, they, 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 they were close, you know, but I thought Barry rode an absolute peach because he actually waited, you know. I mean, there wasn't enough room coming to the last. We'll watch it again here. But he makes his challenge, and when he does, his horse answers him. And, uh, I, you know, did he improve his position? No, I don't believe he did. I think he was on the best horse. But uh, we will just yeah, He's see. looking for a gap up the inner there, but Paul has closed the door on that one. Yes. And then Rachel... And Rachel is doing in. so well, isn't she, do you know? But uh, they just come apart, the, uh, the two... The, um, Dandy Man and expatriate just after the last year he, he, he seizes his opportunity yeah I think Barry is probably more so down to the last than anywhere he's probably shoved his way through a little gap and there he's a stick in the right hand and sl very slightly comes across Rachel but I don't think there's absolutely no interference with the winner so he can't lose it in relation to the winner and I think he's beaten expatriate well enough at the line that any slight bump isn't going to... I'd be amazed if they turn the result around on this one. Yeah, it'd be surprising, all right. Denari de Zobo uh, runs on to finish fourth, but the, the first three are gone. And uh, there is a really nice winner, son of Sindar. A big crowd of the McManus family in the winner's enclosure again. They're... Uh, for a family that have a, a huge amount of runners, they're great supporters of the game and do a wonderful sh show up at almost every 
big outing. They'll have been disappointed with the way Jetski ran. I mean, a champion hurdler, he's just lost his form, hasn't he? He came back with great gusto um, when he made his comeback in January or February. February. Yeah, and then his uh, uh, running horn was below fall. Yeah, it was think. behind Touchstone, and then and then and then Cheltenham was a big disappointment. Yeah. For whatever reason, he hasn't gotten back to near his best this year. But this is a horse for the future. He's just four years old. He's now won three of his six starts over hurdles. William Mullins getting the lowdown from uh, Ruby or Paul. You'd wonder would they consider a tilt at the four-year-old champion in Punchestown? Why not? Okay, we've got a break to come. So much more coming up.